Glad to have you back for yet our today's topic, which is about mentorship. My name is Jonan Kanwanoho, and I'm the team leader at Gender Holdings Limited. I know you've had a lot, you've learned a lot about mentorship. But also there's some uniqueness that I bring on board. Uniqueness based on experience. Uniqueness based on what it is that I've tested. And you see, if I've tested something nice, it is good that I, I prescribe it to a friend, to a colleague like you. And that's why if you look, if you're watching, and you like what I'm talking about, subscribe, but also share this uh, link with someone who can be supported. Mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. You need a person who has mastered the game. But there are key things that you need to look at. You could be in the dilemma that I was in. You see, I was in a dilemma at a certain point. <laughs> I kept asking myself, Jonathan, you've heard about mentorship. You've heard guys talk about mentorship, especially in money lending, because it's what I was doing at Jonaki Holdings Limited. So could you get someone? So I kept looking. But there are some key things that I wanted to get in a person, or in a person who would mentor me, that I was not getting. I'd met a number of lenders. I'd met a number of guys who are running financial institutions. Some of them had actually graduated to microfinance. Some of them had graduated to a bank. But I was not getting the thing that I wanted. You see, there is beyond principles. There is beyond do A, B, C, D. There is beyond accountability. There is something beyond. There is something that you actually have that I was looking for. You have to relate with your mentor at the point of core values, at the point of your belief. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. And I, I wanted someone who was doing business and doing it well. You see, money learning has had such a bad name. It, had, it has had such a beating that you don't even want to associate. I've been in forums, and the guy does not even want to stand up and associate or tell the, the public who are potential clients that he lends money. Why? Because, you know, they are looked at as money sharks, as, you know, loan sharks, as, you know, as, as guys who steal people, as... And yet it's not the case. Because we're in a business to support other businesses. And that's why we exist. If there's no demand, then you cannot have supply. By the fact that they are lenders, even in developed countries, then that means there is demand. And you see, amongst all the clients, whereas they are bad clients, whereas they are proud stars, the mentality that we have at Jonaki, the mindset that we have at Jonaki is that there are some good clients who are doing business and they're doing it the good way. So you get to support them. You get to uplift them. Because if we are not in this business and we are not there to support, that means these guys are going to lose out. Someone is going to lose a business because of 100,000. Someone is going to lose... Their children is going to attend school because of 500,000. The bank is telling them, come after three months, come after, you know, back and forth. But yet us, we come as bridge financials. We come to mind time. A matter of hours, you have the money. So there are a few precepts that we had to consider. There are a few precepts that I had to consider. That look, we can clean this. And yet, I was not identifying someone. I was not getting someone who could relate with me, both in my belief to be my mentor, but also in my core values. So I want to emphasize these two things, among others, because there are quite a number of things you have to look at to get a mentor. So the first thing is the values. What values do you see in this guy? Apart from him running the business that you intend to run, and he's running it very well, what is the key thing that you see this guy running? What is it, the, key, the key thing that is in this guy beyond lending? So those could be the core values. Because one of the things that I was looking uh, at in a mentor was core values. And one of the core values was, was integrity. Because integrity comes from the word integer. You have to be whole. Integer is a whole number. You have to be whole. So you see, I could not associate with someone who would tell me A and is doing B. Who would tell me, you know what, um, the intention is to amass as much wealth as possible. So even before the client totally fails to pay, you actually have to foreclose on the collateral. Even when the client does not qualify, actually give them a loan so that you can acquire their property. That was not the way we are looking at business. And I usually say it to our management, I usually say it to our staff. We are in this business not to make people cry. We are in this business not to amass wealth in the shortest time possible. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 11, that, you know, this honest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. It's what we believe in. We have to make it go little by little. If you acquire money and dishonestly, then that means it's going to dwindle away. 
before you know it, we, have, we shall close shop. You cannot afford to 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 to, to, know, to defraud or you know you know uh, uh, sell people's properties <laughs> and you just think you can go scorn free. It will it will it will, it will catch up with you. So I wanted a, a, a mentor who was who would be integral, who would actually tell me what it is to do, and actually is implementing it because there's a difference between someone telling you what to do and there's a difference. Uh, between someone, you know, doing it. And for someone who is doing it, will talk to you and will know that definitely this guy is telling me what it is that he's doing. Based on the examples, based on the things, based on the evidence, and that's when I had to look out for a mentor. And lo and behold, the Lord was faithful, I got the mentor. He was doing what it is that I was doing, but also uh, observing the core values that I was holding so premium to me. And one of the core values was integrity which when I ticked, I started getting on board. The other key thing that you have to look for in a mentor is that you look, you have to look at a person who can challenge you. Now, a person that you don't believe in cannot challenge you and you do something that they're challenging you on to do. He'll challenge you on, challenge you on something and eventually you'll not do it. Why? Because you're disdaining them, because you're not believing them, because probably they're not even doing what it is that they're t telling you. And those, I usually call them consultants. <laughs> you know, consultant will tell you to do ABCD, which they have not done. Because they have read in a book, because they have read in a particular magazine, they are telling you to do ABCD. Because they have attained a particular course, they are telling you, you know, go do ABCD. That's not what I encourage you in a mentor. A mentor should be someone who is doing what it is that you intend to do or that you're doing. So they have to hold you accountable. They have to push you. You see, if a person that you believe in tells you, go do ABCD, and uh, until you do it, don't come back, you'll get pushed to do it. And it's what my mentor did to me. He told me, John, and look, <laughs> until you go and register, until you go and get a license, until you go and get an office, we are not meeting. But I was paying this guy a cost, a premium cost at it. <laughs> but he said, we shall not meet. I'm not after your money. We shall not meet until you do ABCD. And you see, I first did it, done it for like two, three months. And I didn't do. I called him, he was not picking my calls. I looked for him, I was not seeing him. I asked for appointment from the secretary, I couldn't get to him until I did ABCD, I WhatsApped him, and he said, you know what, schedule a meeting. You need someone of that caliber as a mentor. You need someone of that category as a mentor. And you see, until you can believe in someone, until someone can push you beyond comfort, then you cannot grow. You're going to be paying this guy, you know, you're going to be um, meeting a cost of a time because time is also a cost. You're going to be wasting your time because you not grow. So you need to honor this person. You need to be believing in them, but also they should be able to hold you accountable. They should be able to push you to your uncomfortable zone. You see, excellence is in the zone of the uncomfortable. <laughs> you cannot excel if you're comfortable. So you can only get uncomfortable to excel. And sometimes, or much of the time, you need someone to push you, to stretch you, to get you to such an uncomfortable zone, and then you can actually start realizing uh, the unexpected. And you're going to, to, to start realizing the unexpected growth, the unexpected levels, and then you're going to start shining. So such, some of this push, or most of this push, is very healthy. It's very good and very healthy. And then finally, or very finally, um, it's good to know that you get to a point when you think you have understood. You have made it. <laughs> You have arrived. So there's a spirit of arrivism. You see, you've been meeting this guy and probably you think you have mastered the game. There is no mastery in this industry. And not in this business alone, but across all other industries. Because as far as I know, Coke is a leading advertising company in the whole world, but it's still advertising. So they have not even mastered it. So who do you think you are to think that you've mastered? Continuous learning. Don't think that you've, you've hit the... the top and you, you're going to, you cannot sustain the top if you don't continuously learn. So be humble. <laughs> be humble. Because as a matter of fact, the mentor that is mentoring you, who is doing very good in that industry, is still being mentored. is still being supported. is still learning. So I encourage you to uh, not assume that you've mastered the game. Avoid the, the arrivism mentality. Avoid thinking that you've mastered the game and you, you're top of it and you think you can keep there. As you get on top, on top, you need to sustain the top. <laughs> if you get on top, you need to sustain the top. But also, it is important to know that you may reach a moment and like, you know what? This mentor can challenge you to, to graduate you to another level. You can say, you know, given the level you're at, I can now graduate you to probably another person. 
I think you've mastered what it is that I wanted you to master. So have a transition time. I've, I've met you for two, three years. You've reached where I wanted you to reach. Now you can officially hand you over to probably to another level. So it's good to know at what point to graduate. So uh, as I get to a close, it's also important. I think I mentioned it even in my previous uh, uh, talk that get to honor. You see, sometimes we are charged to associate with some of these high-end guys. They are giving us knowledge, but they're giving it free of charge. But choose to honor these guys. Choose to honor, even if he's giving this information free of charge. Because what you pay for, you tend to value. And also, we, get, uh, we tend to, to, um, to implement or to share with the public what it is that we value. So I challenge you that you go out there, irrespective of the business you're running, go get a mentor. But also get a mentor who shares your value, your core values. But also get a mentor who has done what it is that you're doing or what it is that you intend to do. And then get a person who will hold you accountable, challenge you beyond the comfort to the uncomfortable. Because excellence lies in the, in the uncomfortable. See you next in our next talk, which will be systems in business. Because you need systems so the business can run sustainably in your absentia. So subscribe. Uh, like, comment, and then we shall get to grow with you. Thank you for watching this video. God bless you.